salt right there. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. We thank God for allowing us another opportunity to come together to worship. Are you ready to praise God today? Come on. Are you ready to praise God today? Has it been good to you? Amen. You said, has it done anything for you? Amen. Amen. We thank God for another day of worship. Amen. Amen. God has been good to us. Amen. Amen. We have life, health, and strength. Y'all yeah. feel all right, right? Yeah. Amen. Now, if you don't feel good, now, uh, we're going to sing a song that's going to make you feel good, all right? All right. All right. Amen. It's a very familiar song, uh, and I, I love to sing it myself. Yeah. Amen. 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 I love to praise him. Oh, yeah. Amen. Oh, yeah. Amen. Now, that's what we're going to sing. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Now, I want you to put all you guys into it, okay? I'm going to do my best. I'm going to do my best. I don't know how that's going to come out, but I'm going to do my best. Amen, amen.
he was leaving the worship experience today, but um, I thank God for um, Reverend Lagan's. Um, I was just sharing with him on last week. He had a wonderful message about being afraid of himself. Amen. And boy, I thought on that. You know, when I thought, think, and look back, I'm afraid of myself. Some of the things I can do, or some of the things, have you thought about some of the things you could think? Come on, y'all. Yes, yes. Have you thought about some of the things you could think? Yes, yes. About some of the people you know? Yes close to you, in amen. church. Amen. All right, amen. amen. We're going to move forward. I just thank God that, that um, and, and Deacon White read last week, and I will read the scripture. I sing unto the Lord. I sing praises unto the Lord because he has dealt bountifully with me. Yes. Which means he has forgiven my sins, but over and over and over again. I could go to him. So uh, thank you, Deacon White, for that and Reverend Lakers. At this time, Deacon White will give us our scripture reading for this morning, yeah. followed by a prayer by Reverend Lakers. <laughs> and then I'm going to pass the mic back to Reverend Lakers. Yeah. Good morning, Bethany. Good morning. Good morning. This morning I'll be coming from the book of Deuteronomy. I'll be coming from uh, chapter 28, starting with the first verse. And I shall come to pass. Thou shalt hearken diligently, diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God to observe and do all his commandments mm -hmm. which I have commanded in, in this day. And the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all nations of the earth. And all these blessings shall come in thee and overtake thee if thou shalt hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. Yes. Blessed shall there be in the city and blessed it shall be in the field. Blessed shall be the fruit of thy body and the fruit of the ground, and the fruit in thy cattle, and increase thy art, and then flex the flocks of thy sheep. Yes. Blessed shall be the basket in thy store. Blessed shall be when thy cometh, and blessed thy way when we cometh out. Yes. The Lord shall cause thy enemy that rise up against us to be smited. For thy face. They shall come out against thee one way, and they shall flee seven different ways. The Lord shall command the blessing unto thee in thy storehouses and all thy cities, and thy upon, and he shall bless thee in the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. The Lord have blessed the reading here and understanding of his words. Shall we pray? Again, our wise, everlasting Father. Yes, yes. First of all, we thank you for life, health, and strength. Thank you. We thank you, Master, for how you watched over us all last week. No hurt, harm, or danger came our way. Thank you, Jesus. So, Lord, we just want to say thank you. Thank you. Lord. We thank you because you didn't have to do it. Oh, yes. But because of your mercy and your grace, you allowed us another opportunity oh, yes. Yes, to yes. come to this place and to worship you and to hear what you have for us today. Thank you, Lord. So we humble ourselves before you, Lord. Yes. And we admit that we have sinned and yes. done wrong. Yes. Oh, yes. So, Lord, we confess our sins today. Yes, yes. And we're so grateful that you are forgiving God. Thank you. Lord, we thank you for this day of worship. We pray now that as we prepare for this worship experience today, we pray that the Holy Spirit may have his way. Yes, Lord. Yes. We pray that you would anoint us fresh, Lord. Oh, God, we need you in our lives. We need you in our jobs. We need you in our homes. So, God, we pray and ask today that you would just be merciful unto us. And then, God, we pray for our pastor today yes, as he yes. talk to us about the word of God. Yes, yes. We pray that you would touch him right now in the name of Jesus. Name of Jesus. And then, Lord, if there's anyone here today that don't know you in the part of their sin, oh, 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 God, would you stir up their hearts and their minds yes. that they may come running down the aisle today oh. crying, what must I do yes. to be saved? Yes. Oh, God, we can't make it without you, so we yes. are depending on you, Lord. Yes. 
Use us today. Yes, yes. Let us magnify your name. Yes. Let us shout hallelujah yes. and praise you for all that you do. Thank you, Jesus. We love you, Lord. Yes. And we give ourselves to you today. Yes. For this thing we ask in the precious name of Jesus. Jesus, Jesus name. Name. Amen. 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 Praise God. Amen. 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 Thank God. We thank God for that prayer and for the scripture. I heard in that um, scripture, I heard in that I will hearken diligently. I will listen intently, diligently to the voice of the Lord. And that's how we'll do it. Sometimes he speaks to us in that small, still voice. That we got to get quiet. We got to get by ourselves. We got to. Um, lay out before him that we could hear. So thank you for that again. And then as um, Reverend Leggins was praying as we go into our testimony, um, I heard him say that uh, we need you, Lord. We need you. And I'm, I'm not going to presume to speak for you. I'm going to speak for myself. I need you, Lord. I need you in everything that I do. I can't, I can't wake up in the morning. I can't go to sleep at night. I can't create a good thought in my mind without the Lord. Um, so um, let's go with that fervor this morning, that we need him for everything. Amen. How many know you need him? How many know you need him? Amen. Amen. All right. Don't look at me like I'm crazy. I know I need him. Amen. So, um, since I need him, I'm going to say up some testimonies. And if you have a testimony of how good, good God has been to you, we're going to give you that opportunity to share your testimony. Tracy want to be the first one, and followed by um, Sister Lady. So we're going to start with Sister Tracy and then go to Sister Lady. He's in the Navy. He graduated from boot camp. He said boot camp was easy for him. 
because he worked out every day. He ate like he was supposed to do. He studied like he was supposed to do. He read everything he possibly could read to, to get him to that level, to get him to understand what they do in the Navy. So therefore, my young people, and, our, and, and as parents and as grandparents, when our children have that desire, follow with them, question them. What do you want to be? What do you want to do? OK, let me help you. OK, let me get this here for you and do this for you so that if, if that heart, that burning yearning that this is what I want to do, this is where I want to be in five years. He made a list of everything he wanted to accomplish. And once he did one thing, he marked it off. I graduated. I got a first job. I'm reading my Bible. I want to go in the Navy. I want to be, I want to be able to pick my own job. And thanks to Samuel, Brother Samuel in the back. When Jeremy came here last year, he was having problems with the, with the math part of it as to reading the, the, the word problems. Mm -hmm. And Brother Samuel and Jeremy met every day that he was here. Mm -hmm. Three hours every day. Amen. And Brother Samuel, I have to tell you, whatever the conversation Thank you, you had with Thank Jeremy, you, Lord. Thank you, yes, he admires you uh -huh. and what you have done for him and all that you taught him and Praise what he God. needed to understand so that when he could move forward. Because when he went in to take that test, the first he took that test six times. Those scores were not good enough for him because he said, he told him he could do better. He went back and he re regrouped himself, restudied, and came back and kept continued to take that test until he got the score that he needed to take to get into the service and to pick the job that he wanted. Praise yeah. God. Not for some job that they want to give him, right. but the job that right. he wanted. Yeah. And when he got in there, they told him, oh, you're going to be here. You're going to be a GS2. He said, no, 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 no. Excuse me. I'm a GS3. Mm. According to what I have and according to the knowledge and the test that I've already taken and my score that I have, that I have received, I'm not that. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes, we see. We see now. We understand. He's GS3, going in as GS3. Praise God. Amen. And he Amen. loves every minute of it. Amen. And to tell you, Brother Samuel, he said, it's gotten real, but he still loves it. He enjoys every minute of it. And to your young children, to your young teenagers, when you have something passionate, and he started in with, with God first, yes. and God helped lead him yes. to that, to that where he's at right now, it's a blessing. Yes. I'm sorry. <laughs> yes, we want to thank you all for your testimonies. We thank you um, uh, for that. And Brother Samuel, I wish I knew you in high school, <laughs> grade school, and college, running from math. <laughs> So um, we thank God for that, and Sister Donna Marie and all of you that gave the testimonies. We want to go with that same spirit into our worship experience and for us to thank and know that we need God for everything. Amen. Amen. Let's close our devotion with a prayer. We're going to link hands. You don't have to move. Just link hands with the person next to you. Amen. Amen. If you're not next to someone, just send your heart out that way. Let's bow. Heavenly Father, we thank you. Thank you. We thank you for your great love, Father, yes, Lord. that you saw us even before we were formed yes. in our mother's womb. Yes. You knew us, Father. Yes, Lord. So we thank you right now yes. this morning. We pray for your blessing, your anointing in this place. As Pastor prayed this morning, we pray for the anointing for our church, Father yeah. God. That we don't just come in and sit in, but we become the church. Yeah. So wherever we go, Father God, we have the church in our heart. Yeah. So we thank you right now. Consecrate us. Ready us for service this morning. Father, we give honor. We give blessings, we give glory yes. to your holy name. And Father, we thank you, thank you. for we need you with everything that we do, Father. Yes, Lord. And we thank you for thank being right by our side. Yes. Now bless this service as we go higher, as we worship you, as we draw near to you, Father. Yes. Bless it in the name of Jesus we amen. pray and ask. Amen and amen. 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 amen.
Look, church, say amen. 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 Say amen again. Amen. Come with a spirit of love and worship, and God's going to bless you. Amen. 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 We're going to uh, sing. You don't have to stand. If you sing well, I won't stand you. Amen. If you don't sing, I'll stand you. Amen. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. Do you remember that when you were young? Some of us do. This little light. Here we go. This life is not our own. Let's begin reading. The Bible says, it's a trial run of the Bible in Matthew 25, verses 14 to 30. It begins with the pulpit. For the kingdom of heaven is as a man traveling into a far country who called his own servants and delivered unto them his goods. Church? And to one he ate five Then he that hath received five talents went and traded with the same, and made them other five talents. And likewise, he that had received two, he also gave other two. But he that hath received one went and digged in the earth and hid his Lord's money. So he that had received five talents came and brought other five talents, saying, Lord, thou deliverest unto me five talents. Behold, meaning look, I have gained beside them five talents more. 
that hath received two talents, came and said, Lord, thou deliverest unto me two talents. Behold, I have gained two other talents beside them. His Lord said unto him, Well done, good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over many things. I will make thee ruler over many things. And thou hast been Lord Then he which hath received the one talent came and said, Lord, I knew thee that thou art a hard man, reaping where thou hast not sown, and gathering where thou hast not straw. His Lord answered and said unto him, Thou wicked and slothful servant, thou knewest that I reap where I sowed not, and gathered where I have not straw. Take therefore the talent from him, and give it unto him which had ten talents. Altogether, and cast ye the unprofitable servant into our darkness, that shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading, hearing, and doing of his word, a wonderful lesson about using what you have. And then you can say, use it or lose it. Got to use it. Reverend Lakins will now take us to the throne of grace and mercy. Shall we pray? Yeah. All wise eternal heavenly Father, we are so grateful that you have allowed us this privilege and opportunity to come together to worship you, to honor you, and give you all the glory. So God, we humbly submit ourselves to you today uh, for the use of this service. Oh God, we realize that we have fallen short and we have not done all the things that we should have done. But God, we come before you because we realize that it's you and you alone in our lives. So we only submit ourselves to you today, Lord Jesus. And then God, we just thank you for this time of worship and praise that you have provided for us. You didn't have to protect us. You didn't have to keep us from any hurt, harm, or danger. But God, because of who you are, you love us so much that you put your arms around us and you protected us and you kept us from hurt, harm, or danger. So Lord, we say thank you first of all. We give you all the glory and honor. We know that we don't deserve it, but because of who you are, God, you allowed us another chance, another day to be in the house of God. So we say much of life. We give you the glory. It's all because of you. So God, as we come today, we pray right now in the precious name of Jesus. If there is anything that stands between us and you, we ask that you would forgive us, God. Oh, God, we ask that you would forgive us and cleanse us from our sins. Oh, God, we want to hear from you today. So, Lord, we just say thank you for this opportunity of being here. So, Lord, have your way with us today. Have your way, Lord. We give our lives, we give ourselves to you today, Lord. And then, God, we pray for our children, Lord. We pray for our youth. Oh, God, would you touch their hearts and their minds and use them to sing glory unto your name. Oh, God, we pray for them today. Use them, Lord. For we ask this in the blessed name of Jesus. Amen. And all the church says, Amen. 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 Praise God. God bless you. You may be seated. At this time, we're going to ask the deacons and the office, officers that they will come to receive our benevolent offering. Amen. 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 We still in worship. Amen. 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 Amen.
one that was able to give for the special blessings to the one that would like to work at night. Let me use this money for the other people to be okay them on earth. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you so very much for your giving. God bless you, and may heaven shall keep you is our prayer. I want to thank the Young uh, People's Department, young, the Youth Department on yesterday. We did have a wonderful time in our Bible, I guess you'd call it um, exercise, and our academic exercise. I want to thank uh, Brother Samuel Adiosen for the chemistry class. We had over 20 kids here, and they learned an excellent chemistry on yesterday. Hey, man, I'm going to ask Samuel if he has time to put that, those experiments on film, on tape, uh, and have them at our website so the children can see the, these things are stimulating to the adults. He used some dry ice and all of whatever he mixed up, and it bubbled over. They had soap in it, the kids were playing with the bubbles. It was an exciting thing. It looked like some movie. You'd see that dry ice coming out of there and the foam and all of that. They learned a lot of things about the chemical reactions, and that is important to stimulate thinking. Then they saw the movie, uh, Hidden Figures, where the young, the young lady who started out in math was a genius and worked with NASA as, a, as the uh, African-American ladies there and did an extremely good job, so much so that we didn't know how John Glenn felt about it until we saw the movie. Amen? He said, I won't get on that thing until that lady does those figures. I mean, I don't trust the computer. The computer had messed up. Big old IBM with two, two classrooms full of computers. In the old days, they had those big things. They met, those things messed up. He said, I want to get that lady. Get that lady who knows that man. And she outdid all the men from MIT and everywhere else. She right. was gifted. Yes. You never know what God put in you until you get to trying some yeah. things that Amen. you never tried yeah. before. You ought to try that. Amen. Yeah. Amen. So I want to thank God for all the youth who, and all the sponsors who work. And they, we had a lot of sponsors. Thank you for grandmas for bringing your grandchildren and all you who helped out. It was an exciting time. Amen. Amen. And so I thank God. Not many churches would put on a chemistry class on Saturday. I, I, I can name them on one hand. <laughs> so I want to thank God we did that. And it's because we had the resource of a good teacher. And thank you, Samuel, for being unselfish and sharing that. Samuel was as excited as the kids. Let me say, when you teach kids, you got to get excited. Amen. You can't hardly teach without being excited. Amen. If you're not excited, it won't be transferred. All right, we want to thank God. Next um, Saturday, I believe, we're going to be going to the uh, Green Acres with the children. The children go on an outing. Say amen. Amen. Listen, we spend money on y'all babies. Amen. They go everywhere. Last year, they went uh, to Green Acres. They went to the Children's uh, Museum. They went to the Alamo. We go a lot of places. They Amen. Do some. And we want them to have good experiences. Why? Because when they are trying to conceptualize things in class, they can pull from their experiences. Amen? Amen. And so you've got to give children experience. They don't get the experience. That's what it meant in the old days to be a minority and be deprived in education. You didn't have the experiences to pull from. But the more you see, the more people read to you, you get to draw from that. So we are making sure, I was looking at the poster in the back, just of many experiences we have had. Kids went to Enchanted Rock last year with the youth from Fort uh, Hood. And so we have a, an array, uh, a banquet of things that you can do. So next week we go to Green Acres. Amen. Amen. And I'm going to get on the race car for the third year in a row. <laughs> I'm going to get on that race car. We're going to go around that thing. Amen. Amen. It's real, too. It's a gas-driven engine. Amen. Combustible and all that stuff. And I'm going to put my pedal to the metal, all right. Y'all come on out and have a good time with the kids. We are um, scheduled to go out there next week, so we invite you to come. Amen? Amen. This is good. I, I remember when I was growing up, we didn't have all these things because we you know, it was segregated. We couldn't hardly go a lot of places. But we thank God we can do these things now. All right? Amen. So come and have fun next week with us. All right. Then we're getting ready to receive our guests in uh, August from uh, all the way from Denmark. Amen? Amen. 
So we want to be ready. I want the choir to stand for. I want the ushers on duty. I want the pews packed. I want us to have a wonderful international time. What other church on the east side of San Antonio, Texas, have folks come from Denmark? Amen? Amen. Amen. Name one. <laughs> hey, we're blessed. Amen. You know, to know when you're blessed, we are grateful to God. Amen? Amen. They could be coming from Zagin or uh, Nagar or uh, Floresville, but they're coming from Denmark. That is a big statement about what God says about your church, that halfway around the world, folk have known about it and won't come. So I'm excited about that. You be excited too. All right, we're going to turn the choir loose, as the old preachers used to say. We have our young people up here. They have worked. I hope they have worked. I know they have worked. Amen. Amen. And uh, they are, uh, you have to make allotments for people when you let them come in. Sometimes everybody doesn't come. Uh, fully, fully, fully understanding what they're about. They have to learn what they're about. Amen. 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 So we got to give them a little slack sometime and let the children learn that they can sing, that they enjoy singing, and that God has given them a gifted voice. Amen? Amen. So we want to welcome them. We, we may not have a lot of money, but we can be rich in encouragement. What can we be rich in? Encouragement. Encouragement. And if you'll encourage somebody, you'll see a blessing come to their life. So all right, give me a little roll of the, of the piano. Amen. All the way. Ladies and gentlemen, all the way from Fellowship Hall. Right around the corner. We have the high step, high spirit, young people.
morning, Bethany. Good morning. First, giving honor to God, His Son, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit. Mm-hmm. And to our pastor, the Reverend Dr. Ronald Benson. All associate ministers, and to you, my brothers and sisters in Christ. The announcements for Bethany First Baptist Church for Sunday, July the 16th, 2017, are as follows. On Wednesday evening at 7 p.m., our Bible study and prayer meeting. The soil counseling is daily by appointment. Sunday school begins at 8.30 a.m. Morning worship begins at 10 a.m. Church activity. We are asking all the youth and any adult that's going to be present with them on the outing to Green Acres next Saturday to please sign up at the best meeting. There is a silent treat available over there. And we look forward to having everyone who wants to go. Also, um, next Saturday, I'm sorry, in preparation of our International Sunday celebration on Sunday, August 27th, on the fifth Sunday, there will be a choir rehearsal for all the parties. They'll be on Saturday, the 29th, at 11 a.m. Thank you. These are your announcements. It's going to be so important. Thank you. Amen. 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 All right.
And the Lord touches my heart to say we are praying for all families today. Amen. Families need prayer. Yes. You may be in a family, you should be, and there may be situations within the context of that family that need serious and earnest attention, and that serious and earnest attention can only be given when prayer is had for the family. Amen. Children need prayer. Parents need prayer. Is that right? Yes. Fathers need leadership prayer. Yes. Mothers need leadership prayer and fellowship. Amen? Yes. Children need obedience prayer. Yes. And you have way with children that have gotten grown and let me say it in the southern word, sassy. Yes. Amen? Yes. And we got to pray for them too. Yes. They're just as much love yes. Yes. and just as much concern, but their mind isn't right right now. Yes. So we are praying for families because families need prayer. Yes. Sickness and doctor's appointments sometimes abound. And there are times when sickness can get you depressed. You say sick long enough, you'll be depressed. Yeah. Guarantee it. But you've got to ask God to give you strength to climb the rugged hill Amen. and to trust him and lean not to your own understanding. If you really believe all things work together for the good, you've got to believe some bad things work for your good. Because yeah. the Bible says all things, not all good things, not all bad things, but all things, good or bad, have a way of working out for your best. Yeah. Paul was given a messenger of Satan to buffet him, and he had to learn something in the process of being buffeted by his problem with his eyes. And that God said, my grace, Paul, is sufficient for you. For my strength is made perfect in your weakness. Boy, it takes some hurt to find that one out. It takes some pain, it takes some disappointment, and then you have to pick yourself up and say, I'm going on anyhow. Do you know you need some anyhow strength? And the only way you get some anyhow strength is getting to Jesus anyhow. God loves you anyhow. No matter if you're sick, no matter if something's wrong in the house, God still loves you like he loved the wayward prodigal son. He was waiting on that boy to come home. And he didn't give up on him. And when he came, he didn't talk him down. He didn't say, that's what you get, uh-huh, goody, goody. He said, this my son was lost. He's found. He was blind, but now he sees. So we're praying on these rows here in these pews for the sick, for the hurting, for the families, for the destiny and destination God wants to take you. Your life is not over. In fact, if you're old, it's just getting good. Amen? It's just now getting good. Amen? Kind of like a, a crock pot. It don't get good until it's, it's cooked a little while. Amen? And then the juices start flowing and the aroma comes out. Y'all won't y'all cook them up. Amen? <laughs> Old folk know what I'm talking about. Young folk looking at me like, what is a crop about now? <laughs> Come on here. We're going to pray for you. Let God get the best out of you yet. The best is yet to come. The best is yet to come. Won't you come? Here? Come and be blessed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is yet to get the best out of you. All who believe in prayer, you feel the need for prayer. And the way, believing in God brought you this far. And believing in God going to take you further. I believe that. I know you can't make it without God. Don't sense in trying. Amen? We're going to let the deacons come before you now, anoint you with the oil of gladness. It's all of gladness. Don't mean to be sad when this goes on you. When this goes on you, be glad. Be glad there's a remedy. Be glad there's a fix for you. Be glad that God says, I'm still with you, even through your pain and suffering. So we're going to move among you now. For those who would like to be anointed, we're going to anoint you in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. God bless you.
prayer. There is power in prayer. There's the privilege of prayer and then there's the power in prayer. God says man ought to always pray and not faint. The fervent, effectual prayers of the righteous. God says availeth much. What is much? Much is whatever you need plus. It's whatever you need plus. Because when God blesses you, he's not a chinchy giver. He doesn't give you a little bit. You say, I need a little more, Lord. He always gives you more than, more than you expect, more than you need. And you, you listen, you can get a blessing and start crying. Have you ever got a blessing and started crying? Have you ever got a blessing and started crying? Because you know you weren't worthy of what God gave you. God gave you more than you asked for. More than enough. Because he's that kind of father who loves you in spite of what we are. He looks beyond our faults. And his grace and mercy is not contingent on how we have acted. Isn't that a good thing? Because some of us have acted ugly. And God forgave us and blessed us anyhow. See, we get to God anyhow, and God gets to us anyhow. He said, I'm not going to hold that against you. I'm going to bless you. We're going to bless Deacon Ray. We're going to let Deacon Ray take us to the throne of grace. Asking God to heal you. Asking God to refresh you. Asking God to remember his covenant with you. He has not broken his covenant, but he's a covenant keeper. Men break their promises, but lie to us, and they try to cheat us. But God is not that way. Amen, amen. God is steadfast, immovable, always abounding for your good. Now we're going to call on that God of glory, the God of the Bible, not the God of man. We're going to believe God at his word, and we're going to trust him. Amen? Amen. Get ready, anointed, so he can be ready to do the work of the Lord. Amen? All right. So, uh, please. Oh, Father, we thank you again for this privileged time. And Father, we ask that you consecrate us in our heart and our spirit, the very depths of our soul. Father, that our um, attention and our everything about us goes towards you at this time. Well, Father, we realize that we are not worthy. We realize that we are sinful in nature. And if we say that we are not, we make you a liar. And we know that you cannot lie. So, Father, we come right now. We come with a humble heart. We come with our eyes and our soul fixed on you. We come that you might enter in and that you might clean up our hearts, that we might worship you in this time. Father, we realize that we can't come to you just any kind of old way, but that we are to humble ourselves under your mighty hand and come before you confessing our sins that we might hear a word from heaven. And Father, if there's ever a time for us to hear a word from heaven, it's right now. Yes. Father, we are hurting. Yes. No matter how much we dress it up, no matter how much we come with all yes. the, oh, the yes. smiles and all oh, the yes. happy-go-lucky, we are hurting. Yes. We are hurting in our yes. spirit, yes. deep in the recesses of our soul. Yes. Father, we don't have to look to the Republicans or the Democrats to say that they're hurting. We're hurting because we haven't done all that you have called us. Father, we have been slowful. We have been slowful for the things of God. We can watch TV all day long, but we can't go out and worship. People's souls are dying. And Father God, I start with myself. I pray for your consecration. Yes. We're hurting deep in our soul, Father. Our hearts are hurting. And it can only be touched and healed by your almighty hand. Now, Father God, I pray that you speak to us. Slow us down. Get us in our prayer closet, our secret place, that we might hearken diligently unto your call, Father, Father, we need you 
in this day. We need you. This congregation is hurrying, Father, and we need you. We need you. But most of all, Father, we thank you. We thank you for being an all-knowing God. We thank you that you can heal our soul and our bodies. We thank you that you can make provisions for us. We thank you that you have made a way for us. We thank you that you saw us one day when we was lost in, 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 in our sin, Father God. And you picked us up. You dusted us off, Father. You planted our feet firmly toward the cross, Father God. And now we can live for you. Father, get us back towards that living for you. That we can cast all of our cares upon you. For the Bible says that you care it for us. Now for those who are dealing with issues and concerns and worries and hurt, Father, I pray that your spirit move in this place. Touch our hearts. Wash us thoroughly. Clean us up, Father, that we might be able to see you more clearly and to do your will. Now we give you all the praise. We give you all the honor. We don't take you lightly and for granted. We come to you as your children, hurting and needing your help. We thank you. We love you. We adore you. And Father, we leave it in your hands. We leave our life in your hands. That when we get up, when we get up, not only do we believe, but we know that it's in the Master's hand. We thank you. In Jesus' name we pray and ask. Amen. Amen.
saying, we're going to let them come down. I'm going to invite you to turn in your Bible in the Old Testament to the book of Nehemiah. Nehemiah will be our subject for this morning. I'm going to invite you to turn now in your Bible, in the Old Testament, to the book of Nehemiah. Don't let the choir come down now. We've got to give them a little marching music, a little more. Hallelujah. Everywhere you gotta go. The word to go to jail with you. 
get your, your boy and children out. Your wife will do more than just stand on that table. They're going to walk with you, talk with you, work with you, heal you. Hallelujah. Now I can preach. Amen. 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 I'm preaching Amen. three weeks. I'm ready to preach. Amen. Amen. Now let me go. Here we go to the book of Nehemiah. In the book of Nehemiah, you should have found it by now. Ezra, Nehemiah, Esther, Job. Amen. If you have the Bible and you have that portion of it, won't you stand if you're yet able? If you're yet able, you may stand. I'm going to read a few verses. I shall not tackle the whole book in one setting. We're going to take increments of Nehemiah as we begin a Nehemiah series. This is the first thing. The words of Nehemiah in verse 1, chapter 1. The words of Nehemiah. And that might read the acts and the experiences of Nehemiah. But he said, the words of Nehemiah, the son of Hachalia, and it came to pass in the month of Chislu, yeah. that's either November or December. It's the middle of both of them. That's the equivalent of the Jewish calendar. So it was in the winter. In the month of Chislu, in the 20th year, as I was in Shushan, the palace, that Hanina, one of my brethren, came, he and certain men of Judah, and I asked them concerning the Jews that had escaped, which were left of the captivity and concerning Jerusalem. And they said to me, what did they say? They said to me, the temple, or the remnant rather, that are left in the captivity there in the providence are in great affliction. You yeah. read that? Great yeah. affliction and reproach. The wall of Jerusalem also is broken down and the gates thereof are burned with fire. Verse four, I'm gonna stop there. And it came to pass when I heard these words, that I sat down and wept and mourned certain days and fasted and prayed before the God of heaven. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading and hearing of his word. We're going to talk about serious times require serious prayer. Can you say that with me? Serious times require serious prayer. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Father, we come in the precious anointed name of Jesus. Let the words of my mouth, the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. Allow the self of me to be seated that thy Holy Spirit may have his work in this place. Changing lives, washing and cleansing hearts and getting people redirected so that they are rerouted to the right things away from the wrong things. That their minds be open, their minds and eyes be open for perception and clarity. And that they be no more led around by the whims and doctrines and slate of men like a tumbleweed. But they be like that tree planted by the rivers of water that bring forth fruit in its season and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. May the prosperity of the gospel be on the people of the gospel. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Here we have a setting by which Nehemiah records what is happening. And it is significant because Nehemiah served as like a butler. If you saw Oprah Winfrey's butler with Forrest Whitaker, you know what a butler at the White House goes through. This was greater than a butler because for Nehemiah was the king's cup bearer. And that was a significant title. It might mean head butler, it might mean concierge, it may mean a lot of things today, but what it meant in those days, he was next to the king. Every time the king would eat, he would, Nehemiah, as the cupbearer, had to taste the food, drink the wine, and if someone was trying to poison the king, guess who would be there first? Nehemiah. How would you like a job where you went to that job and every day you had to test something and you didn't know if that was going to be a coup d'etat, somebody was trying to kill the king, then you say, drink it. And you say, who, me? That's your job. You drink that, if you die, then I'm going to live. How would you like a job like that on Monday morning? Come on, you got to get up, I got to go to work. Huh? I may not come back, but I'm going. 
That was the job Nehemiah had. And it was on these jobs that God strategically placed you. Now you don't know that your job has been strategically placed until God begins to unravel some things about your job that nobody else can do. You don't appreciate your job, you think, they pay me just enough to keep me here. Lord, when I get something else, I'm going to take it. But you know, sometimes they pay you just enough, and you do just enough work to keep them being done. So you're in a just enough city, huh? Just enough for the city, huh? Just enough to make it. But Nehemiah had been strategically placed in the Persian Empire under King Artaxerxes. King Artaxerxes is going to be a good king, but he was a king who didn't believe in God. He was a king that if you were looking in his presence and you weren't good looking and you start looking sad, he would say, what are you doing looking sad in my presence, in my court? Number one, you have to be good looking. Huh? I believe some of us are. Most of us would be that. You have to be good looking to be in the king's court. You couldn't be blemished. Secondly, you had to always smile and be pleasant. You couldn't walk in there with a frown. So the third thing is, if you were, went to work, you not only could be reprimanded, you could lose your head for being sassy. But just for looking that way. How many people would have killed, been killed in those days? Coming to work mad, got a chip on their shoulder, talking bad to everybody. They wouldn't have made it to the door. They would have had the gallows with you. That's the kind of job he had. But he was on that job day and night because the king had to eat day and night. And because he was in the king's court, he had the king's ear. In fact, he and the king got pretty close. As you will find out, he and the king got along well. If you wanted to get anything to the king, you had to go to Nehemiah because Nehemiah could speak to the king. That's an amazing job. It's kind of like the job Joseph had when he was prime minister of Egypt. It's kind of like the job that Esther had when she went in to speak to uh, her king to tell him to not to slay the Jews. In other words, who knows, maybe God has put you in the position he's placed you in for such a strategic time as this. Nehemiah was in the, king that was in the king's court and he was at Shushan, the palace which was the southern portion of the, of the Medo-Persian Empire. It was kind of like going to the Florida in the winter. In the winter, they went to Florida, huh? Most people go to, who can afford it, I can't, amen? I can stay in one house one time, all times of the year, amen? But the rich folks, huh, go to Florida when it get cold in New York. Y'all know that, amen? Go to South Florida, South Beach, huh? Uh, I ain't been to South Beach, but they tell me it's expensive there, amen? So I could only go one day if I went to uh, Brother Matthew. I had to come out after they say a $300 bill a night would kill me. But let me tell you something. They went to the, the, the southern portion of the kingdom in Shushan, the palace. It was a beautiful place to be. And then all of a sudden, we get to verse 2. We get to verse 2. And it was noteworthy that Hanina, his brother, now we call him, we call him first his brother. And later in the passage, you will find out it was his brother. So here you are on a job, watch this, on Monday morning you don't like it. You got to drink the king's wine and taste it for him, and you say, oh, Jesus, heaven, here I go for the hundredth time drinking this wine. Lord, I hope nobody pardons me. You know, you could be on a job, and it'd be routine. It'd be monotonous. And all of a sudden, you see somebody you know. That breaks up the monotony. You get excited, and you say, wow, that's somebody I know. I can throw it from my, my homeboy, my homie, huh? Am I going to tell you? My best friend. He said, let me, excuse me, but the king, I got to go talk to my, my foe. Excuse me, sir. And he went and he saw his brother, Nahanina, and he remembered it because he said, it was the month of Chislu, in the 20th year of her taxes, Hanina and the men of Judah came. And then I asked them a question. What did you ask them? How is it back at home? How are the people faring? What have become of the Jews and the remnant who escaped the captivity? And how does Jerusalem look? He was excited because his presence of his brother broke the monotony of his job. And nothing can get you excited like seeing somebody on your job, and you say, I gotta go talk to him. That's, that's my friend over there. We grew up together. That's my brother. And you know, the news was not good. When he asked about down home, when he asked about how things were going, he got a report 
that really turned him around. He was all right till he got the report. He said, the Jews that are left are in great affliction, meaning they are the reproach. They are poor and destitute, and they have the shame and ridicule of everybody. Reproach means you are having shame. But people are looking at you and saying, mm, you ain't nothing. Reproach means, oh, mm, I utterly detest you. So the people there in Jerusalem that had been knocked down, the walls had been knocked down, the, the, the gates had been burnt, and the people were in great affliction. They had ruin. They were the remnant, but they were ruined, and they were in a situation of destitution. If you love somebody and you hear they're starving, I saw so and so the other day, woo, and he looked bad. He's on drugs and he don't have no skin on his bones. His eyes look bad. His teeth look bad. Everything, he was begging for food. Now, if that's your brother, you got, you got a problem to deal with. Yes, yes. If, that, if that's somebody you care about, your boy, your baby, your, your cousin, anybody you care about, you say, what? Oh, he looked bad. And not only that, he didn't have no place to stay. If you love him, you care. If you don't love, you say, too bad. But if you love, what if you love? What does that become to you? A moment of truth when God would take the situation and you ask to be informed, and now you're informed, that brings on an obligation. When you don't care, you don't ask about it. Because if you ask about somebody you don't care, then you got an obligation to do something. So most times when people don't want to be bothered, they don't ask about it. Yeah. Yeah. You've done it. Amen. I've done it. Yeah. I ain't going to get into that. Lord Jesus, they're going to want some more money. Let me not ask about it. Let me get through that interview without asking. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. He cared. And when he cared, he got informed. And when the information came, the obligation came. But the first thing that hit him was the fact that they were destitute and they were in affliction. Affliction meant there were just a few of them left. They had no walls, which meant they were a prey to every kind of predator, animal, man, or beast. When you have no walls around you in the ancient city, you are free, people are free, marauders, nomads, to come in and take what you had. You were at the mercy of the world. He said, ooh, they look bad. They don't have much. Now, Ezra had gone back 12 years earlier to build the temple. But what good is having a temple if you don't have any walls around it? Yeah. You understand? That was the old days. You had a wall to protect. So the walls were knocked down, the gates were burned, and so he gets this report and say, what? Nobody, it's been a hundred years almost since we've been out of there. Uh, people should have gone back. They could have built. Why haven't they done it? Because they didn't have permission from the king to build the wall. They had permission to build the, the temple but to build the walls meant you were setting up yourself as a sovereignty. And the king could take that as a threat. So here was a problem here. The people needed protection, the people needed the dignity restored, and there was nobody in the kingdom that could do it except Nehemiah. He was strategically placed on a government job and put there next to the king so God could one day use it. You don't know how God is going to use you one day. You don't know how God has placed you there. You got to put up with a lot. You got to take a lot. But it gets to that day when it comes to pass that the will of God is brought forth in your life, magnifying and dividing and giving you purpose and meaning and dimension and scope. All of a sudden, it falls into line. And Nehemiah's first, first, first reaction to it, he had to sit down. When he heard bad news, some bad news makes you sit down. You ever heard bad news enough? You say, wait a minute, let me sit down. Bad news can take you off your feet. Don't you think it takes a punch to knock you down? It just takes the right sound or the right or the wrong words and you gotta sit down. So the Bible says that it came to pass, I'm in verse four, watch the processional of events. When it came to pass, he said, and it came to pass when I heard these words, uh -huh. all right? What did he do? That I did what? That's number one. He heard the words and he sat down. And then what did he do? You know God gave you tear ducts? And you just got to use those tear ducts sometimes? 
And sometimes news is bad enough without anybody hitting you in the stomach to make you cry. He had to sit down and a grown man cry. What would make a grown man cry? Hearing the worst news of his life. Your family, the people you love back home, they're eking out a living, struggling day by day. They'll pray to everybody. They could come in there and do all kinds of things to that, 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 that group back at home. So he sat down, the Bible says, and he wept. And then what did he do? And he mourned. There's a moment when you weep, and there's a time when you mourn. Yes. Old song says, oh, Martha, don't you weep, oh, Mary, don't you mourn. Huh? We have a time when we mourn. When we mourn, we don't just mourn someone's passing. We mourn someone who's living, making the wrong choice. We mourn things that have happened to them that need not have happened had they not had a big head, had they not had a proud heart. We mourn when children make the wrong decisions. We mourn and it hurts us and it grieves us. And we can eat, but we still got to go back and mourn. We can sleep, but we wake up in the morning. We wake up sometimes mourning for the Lord. Say that for he mourned, and that's a processional to the cross. Whenever you find mourning, you're on your way to the cross, and you need to mourn to Jesus. And then he said, not only did he mourn and weep, he mourned and wept certain days, which means it was a protracted processional of hurt. The more you love, the more you get hurt. But yet God says love anyway. Huh? Yeah. And he says, beloved, know, know this, that you are loved of God, and he is loved of God, it is God's child. God loves you, and even when he sees you sin, it grieves the Holy Spirit. Amen. So love causes you to be hurt. It's a risk you take when you love. If you don't have true love, you're not going to take any risk, and you're not going to be hurt. But you'll never experience the pleasure and the wonders of loving someone. Let me move on here. And he said, and he mourned certain days, then he fasted. Look at that, he fasted. He went without food and deprived his body because he wanted to make a more excellent presentation to God. Fasting didn't change God, fasting changed him. And when you fast, you see God more excellently. When you fast, you deny and afflict the body that the soul may come up and rise up to the character you need to be. You ought to fast sometimes, except more than when the doctor tells you you're going to have an open GI or colonoscopy. I got the fast. That ain't no fast. Not the kind the Bible is speaking of. The fast the Bible is speaking of is unto God. It's not for no test. It's not for drinking some milk of magnesium. It's from loving Jesus. And so he said, I fasted so I could get my soul right. And then, what's the last thing he did? And prayed. He prayed. He got to that prayer in a processional of events that took him down. And he had to understand. He sat down. He wept. He mourned certain days. He fasted. And then he prayed before the God of heaven. Do you know difficult situations will bring you to the edge of who you are and you have to redefine who you are in Christ? Yes. I'm God's child. Yes. This is not supposed to be happening, but since it is, Lord, I'm your child. And he prayed unto God. Now he prayed a good character prayer because when you pray, there are some serious prayers and there are some routine prayers. Mm -hmm. Now we're mostly guilty of sin of routine prayers. Come on now, you don't have to. You can walk up there, huh? We got some routine prayers, and then we got some showing up, standing up, serious prayers. All right. Amen. Amen. Yes. And you got some prayers, Lord, bless so and so and so and so and so and so and so. And you got your laundry list. Amen. Amen. And then others of you, now I lay me down to sleep, pray the Lord my soul to keep. If I die before I wake, pray the Lord my soul to take. Moses wept, Peter crept. Now Moses wept, and what is it? David crept, and Peter fell off the back door step. Amen. Y'all haven't heard that one? Well, you're going to check that out on Huh? Jesus wept, Moses crept, and Peter fell off the back door step. Huh? That's no prayer. And then hop in the bed, huh? Trying to have a good sleep, and ain't prayed. Now, that's not good English, that's good theology. When Nehemiah heard, 
that his relatives and loved ones were destitute. He had an obligation. The information gave him an obligation. The obligation led him through a processional and litany of prayer. And he got to prayer, and the first thing he said to God was, Lord, according to your covenant. In other words, he prayed according to God's words. He didn't pray, Lord, you got to do something. He prayed it for He didn't do that. He said, Lord, you promised that if you take us and scatter us to the ends of the earth after we had transgressed, you will justify it. But if we call on your name, you said, if I've scattered you to all over heaven, I'll bring you back. I'll love you again. I'll forgive your sin. God is that kind of God. You got to know the God of the Bible. That if you sin and confess your sin, God is faithful. God is just. To forgive you of your sins and to heal you of your unrighteousness. He prayed the promises of God. He didn't get mad at the people. Nebuchadnezzar had been the one who destroyed his army a hundred years earlier, carried off to Babylonian captivity, put them in slave, and made them do for the, for the kings of Babylon, then the kings of the Medo-Persian Empire. He didn't go back to that. He just said, Lord, remember what you see. And that's the thing that we ought to come back to the Lord for. Our nation is under attack. Yes. We got a communist in the White House. Yes. I'm going to say it like it's true. Yes. We got somebody who trade us for gold. Yes. We'll give up our democracy right. over 300 years and then go and get them some money for their, their crooked children. Yes. Yes. We got a nation in Congress that will cut off 20 million people and throw them in the street and think they've done something. Uh -huh. yes. We got a serious situation. Yes. Serious serious. We got a city that's more interested in business than it is in town of the people. They'd rather bring in business, give them a tax abatement, and then go up on our taxes. Yeah. Well, if you want some money, tax the fat cat with all the money. 13% of your property taxes are going up next year. Huh? So, who? You got great pay. We got a situation here that is serious. Nehemiah teaches us how to handle sickness, poverty, affliction, because he goes to God in prayer. And he prayed and he prayed. Now watch this. He prayed, Lord help us. And he ends up that prayer by saying, he closed out chapter 1 by saying, For I was the king's cupbearer. Lord, I understand why you put me in this position. I understand why month after month it was so difficult. I understand why it's been hard. But now I see you have put me here for such a time as this. Help me deal with the king to help my people. Because if I don't help my people, help will not come in the form that it could. And that was what Esther was told. Remember, Esther didn't know what she was there for. Beautiful Esther was in the, king, in the king's court. And he and she, her, her, her cousin Mordecai said the edict was given all the Jews should be killed and their land confiscated. So Mordecai told her, honey, don't think you in the castle, you go and escape. If you don't help us, help will arise from some other place. And actually know ye not that you were put in the kingdom strategically placed for such a time as this? You better go to that king. And you better get some relief. And what did Esther do? She fasted three full days. Here is Nehemiah fasting, and we don't know how many days he fasted. But the problem came to him in December. And then when you find the opening of chapter 2, it was in the year of Nisan, N-I-S-A-N. In the year of Nisan, that was April. So that was four months between the time he heard and the time action came. What was he doing? Pray. Pray. Just because you don't get an answer right away, you shouldn't check off that prayer and say, I ain't praying no more. Our problem is we pray one time and expect it to go. Jesus was in the wilderness 40 days and 40 nights. He didn't wait till the 40th day to pray. He had to pray to overcome the devil every day. The devil just came around with a big grand treatment on the 40th day, but he ought not to get to those, that 40th day. He had to come to go 39. 39 before you get to 40. And in his 39, 39 days, he was praying. So you got to understand, just because God doesn't answer you quickly, does not mean delay is denied. He doesn't deny to you. The trying of your faith work with patience. Patience is a good thing. We just don't have it. 
But if you learn patience, they that wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as they shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Our problem is as a people and as a generation, we have not learned the value and essence of patience. Patience is what God wants. It's for the perfecting of your soul. Miramiah prayed for four months. And he could have said, listen, I don't have no reason to worry about them. I'm in the king's palace. I'm eating caviar and drinking wine every day. I don't care about those folk back home. And most of us would have done that. They would have said to the brother, brother, that's your problem. You see this, what all I got? I'm not leaving this. And you know what? If you don't train an effort to help your people, God has put you in a position to be blessed and to be a blessing. If you fail to see that, he cuts off your blessing. You better see that. You are blessed to be a blessing. Nehemiah fasted 40, if you will, four months, rather. He fasted four months, and then he said, he went into the king's presence, you got a chapter two, and he was of a sad continent. Woo! That was high treason, ready for murder. The king could have snapped his head off, boom, in a millisecond. He was sad in the king's presence, and the king noticed it. You know, if you've been around your boss enough times, he'll know certain things about you. You're trying to hide him, and he said, what's going on? He said, you're looking that way. If you don't look that way, there's something going on. And you can't change your looks. So here was the boss saying, Nehemiah, you have a sad countenance. Meaning, I see you sad. Now, Nehemiah got scared when he said that. Oh, I got scared, Jesus. And he said, this is nothing. This is not sickness. This is nothing but a sorrowful spirit. Meaning, I know you're not sick. And then the next words out of Nehemiah's thought pattern was, Lord, have mercy on me. I'm afraid that this man going to kill me. And then he said, how can I help but be sad, King, when my people back home, the walls are falling, the gates are burned, the sepulchers are open, and they look at trashy, and they can't do nothing. I'm sad, King. And the king said, I had a quick emergency prayer. And he said, Lord, I said, Lord, he said, Lord, give me what to say. And when he said what he said, the Lord let those words touch the heart yes. of the king. You don't know how God is going to work those words until you speak them. Some of us are scared. I'm scared to ask. I'm scared to do it. He ain't going to give me. You've already dismissed yourself and dismissed your faith. you got to believe God. When I went to ask for this building, I had never asked for anything before from anybody to give me. I've always worked for it. But the Lord said, ask at that moment when Jerry Heinex was sitting in his office and he was talking about this building. I said, have you all considered giving that building to a church? And he said, no. I had not considered that. I'll think on it. And Jerry talked with Dick Wade. Dick Wade one of the richest architects in San Antonio. We built all the Valeros and truck stops. He is one of the richest men. And then they called me that day and said, Ron, we're going to give you the building. If I had not listened to God and spoke the words of my faith at the time God told me, I'd have missed the building. God wants you to speak his words. Now, on matter sometime, one preacher said, write this down. Sometime God asks us to do crazy things. Amen. And he said, yeah, they are seemingly crazy. Crazy to man, but they make a lot of sense to God. Amen. He spoke those words, and the king said, well, now, ask what thou wilt. What will thou require? He said, oh, king, let me go and take a leave of absence and go and repair the gates and the walls, and, and let me repair them. Give me a letter to the head of your forest that I can get wood. Give me an escort of military people so I can get through bad lands, and I'll go and fix my father's sepulcher, and I'll fix all the things that need to be fixed. And he said, it's grand. It's grand. Instead of all with his head, give him what he wants. God wants to give you what you want. If you'll speak and you'll pray and you'll know these serious times require serious prayer, you got to ask God. You can't go on your own. There's some things you can't think of. Yes. Nehemiah asked to fix the walls. He didn't ask for the temple. The temple had already been repaired, but he had to get a permit to fix the walls. The only way you can fix the walls and the kings of the Medo-Persian Empire 
you got to get a permit from the king. Otherwise, it was treason and it was a high order of breach, and they would come after you with soldiers. And Nehemiah got that letter, went to the king's forest, the chief of the forest, got all the wood, got all the army, and went into town, and they said, Woo, who is this coming into town? And you'll get the story, because Nehemiah didn't let them know. You can't let everybody know you're going to do good. If you let them know you're going to do good, they'll talk you out of it. Yeah. They don't need that money. Yeah. Is that us? Yeah. They don't have too much money for them. Is that? Come on, somebody. Yeah. They don't need you holding your piece of your hand, touching that hole. Yeah. You will raise, raise your hand if you're guilty. Raise your hand if you're guilty. God already know your heart. Yeah. That's too much money for them. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. But when God gets ready to bless you, bring it on, God. Yeah. 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 Huh? God says, I'm going to bless Nehemiah, and he's going to get all that he needs. And by the time he's through praying, he will give him, I will give him more than he needs. Amen. He went into the city. They didn't know who it was, but they saw what he brought in. And he couldn't tell everybody. But he surveyed the walls, and he saw the situation. And he knew it would take effort, and he knew how to inspire people. Do you know God wants to use you in a magnificent way? But he can't use you until you understand that in Romans 8 and 20, and he says, all things work together for the good of them that love the Lord, who are the called according to his great purpose. You got to know that. If things that are bad happen to you, and they can turn out good, you know good things can bless you even more. You got to accept the good with the bad, the bitter with the sweet, the ugly with the pretty. And you got to believe God can make a change for the best. If you don't lift your head and you're thinking to that level, you're not ready to receive the blessings, the magnificent blessings of God. Because God gets you against the backdrop of evil, the backdrop of hatred, the backdrop of people talking about you, the backdrop of you being ridiculed, the backdrop of you suffering reproach. And then he puts a shining star of his word on you and says, that's my child. The yard, God uses contrasting situations to bring out the best in you. Amen. Amen. Some writers said, like a ship that's tossed and driven and huh, battered by an angry wind. When the storms of life are raging and the fury falls on me, I wonder what I've done to make this race so hard to run. But I say to my soul, take courage. The Lord will make a way somehow. The Lord will make a way somehow. We believe the cross out there. There's a sweet relief in knowing the Lord will make a way somehow. You all let him make a way for you. Serious situation requires serious prayer. And if you want the information, you better be ready for the application. And you better know for a certainty God's going to make you wait before you get an answer. Because the trying of your faith with the patience and patience makes you strong. And hope makes you not ashamed. And who wants to come to Jesus? Somebody ought to want to come to Christ. Serious situations require serious prayer. And God wants to hear from you. Won't you come? If there one this morning, you got a situation at home. This is for families. This is for families that are in need. Won't you pray for that wayward child? That lost one that is shown up lost. Won't you pray for the situation to get better? Come on up now. We'll bless you and anoint you a second time. Come on up. 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 Amen.